Hey guys, welcome back to my channel and thank you so much for watching. In today's video, I'm going to be showing you how I made this cocoa inspired cake. I saw cocoa last week and it was so good. I loved it. If you have not seen the movie, you absolutely should. It was adorable. To get started, I'm using two six inch cakes that I've leveled and cut in half. And I'm going to be filling those with some Swiss meringue buttercream using my small offset spatula. Once my cake is stacked up, I'm going to apply a thin layer of my buttercream all around the outside for a crumb coat, and then that's going in the fridge for about 25 minutes to chill. Once you can touch your finger to the cake and none of the buttercream comes off, then it's time for the final ice. I'm applying a big dollop of buttercream on the top of my cake and then using my small offset spatula at my turntable, I'm just going round and round and smoothing that out until my top is nice and level. I'm applying more buttercream to the sides of my cake and then once I have a thick layer on there, I'm grabbing my bench scraper and just going along the sides until they're completely smooth. For all the buttercream that accumulated on the top of my cake, I'm grabbing my bench scraper again and just pulling that all into the middle, just being careful not to mess up my nice smooth level top. That's going back in the fridge to chill and then I'm going to start on my fondant. I have some purple here that I'm rolling out on my cornstarch surface to about an eighth of an inch thick. If you have any bubbles that form underneath your fondant, you can just use a sharp pin to pop those and then just guide the air out with your finger. I'm picking that up with my fondant roller and draping it over my chilled cake and then just working quickly with my hands and my fondant smoother, I'm pushing all the air out from the top of my cake and then just working my way down the sides, pulling out all those pleats in the skirt of the fondant until I've reached the bottom. I went over the whole thing one more time with my fondant smoother and then cut away the excess at the bottom using my pizza cutter. My cake is going to be two tiers so I need to add some supports. Because this cake is so small I'm just going to use regular straws but if you're doing a larger cake you need to use wooden dowels or those thicker bubble tea straws. I've spaced them out evenly in my bottom tier and then I'm just cutting them to size so that they are flush with the top of my cake. I've added a smear of buttercream and then placed my black four inch tier on top and I'm just centering that. And now for the most time consuming part of the whole cake, I have some orange fondant that I'm rolling out fairly thin and then using the tip of a piping tip, I'm just cutting out a ton of circles. And when I say a ton, I mean a ton. I want these circles to look like the petals of the marigold flower that are in cocoa, so I've thinned out the edges using a balling tool on some of them, and I'm placing those all around the top of my bottom tier. I'm making sure a couple of them have turned up edges because they wouldn't all be laying flat against the cake because that's not how petals naturally would sit. Once I have the top fairly covered, I'm following the design on the bridge in cocoa where the petals are kind of falling down in this pattern. So once I've outlined that, I'm just gonna keep filling it in. To give this a little more dimension because some of the petals are like glowing in the movie, I've used a lighter orange and then I mix some orange fondant together with some yellow fondant and I'm just sprinkling those throughout. At the very bottoms of those like upside down peaks, I've added some smaller petals and then I also added a couple little dots here and there just to give it a little more texture. To make my candles, I've mixed together some ivory and yellow food coloring to get this really light buttery shade. 
and then I'm rolling out my fondant into these long ropes and cutting little pieces out of it. I did some thicker ones and some thinner ones just so I had a variance in the sizes. Then using my balling tool, I'm just creating a divot in the top of each one and I didn't have like perfect circles. I want them to look a little misshapen. Then for a couple of the candles, I rolled out this really thin rope of black fondant and cut little tiny pieces and put those into the center for the wicks. I just used a little bit of shortening to attach them. And then for the majority of the candles, I took some orange fondant that I mixed with a little bit of yellow and I created these little teardrop shapes and attached those into the center so they looked like little itty bitty flames. To finish off my candles, I took more of my buttery yellow fondant and I rolled out some small teardrops and then just attached those to the sides so they looked like melting wax. For some of the food offerings that are going to go on my mantle, I rolled out some light green fondant into these little balls and then I indented the center and added a small piece of brown fondant for the stem. To create the bowl that the apples are going to go in, I took some dark brown fondant and then using my balling tool and the back of a teaspoon, I just created that rounded shape. For my bread, I took a lighter brown fondant and then just rolled it into this oval shape and scored the top using my fondant tool. To make my skulls, I had some balls of white fondant and I just completely winged this. I indented the eyes and the nose with my fondant tool and then just marked in the teeth using my X-Acto knife. You could for sure create like more detailed skulls, but these were fine for me. Once I had made everything for the altar, I just started to put them on top of my petals and I attached them using a little bit of shortening. To make the guitar that sits on top, I have this template that I use that I will link below and I rolled out some white fondant that I added a little bit of Tylos powder to, fairly thick, and then cut out the shape using my X-Acto knife. I added a circle of brown fondant for the center of the guitar and then added another circle of black fondant on top of that. To create the rest of the details on the guitar, I used some white food coloring gel and some black food coloring gel and my fine tip paintbrush. I cannot draw to save my life. So I did not do a very good job of this. It didn't look amazing when I was done, but I will link the guitar below so you can see what the details are supposed to look like. And hopefully if you can draw, you will have a better time of this. If you cannot draw like me, then you might want to make these details from fondant. It is very intricate, so I'm not sure if that will work out but just do the best you can. That's all I did. And you can see it, not everyone is good at everything, but as long as you do your best and that's all that matters. My guitar needs to dry before I can add it to my cake. So in the meantime, I'm going to start on Miguel's face. I couldn't find an actual template for this, so I had to create one using a picture that I found and I will link that below. To start out, I cut out the face part of this template and then I rolled out some white fondant fairly thin and cut that shape out using my X-Acto knife. I attached that to the front of my cake using a little bit of shortening and then basically I just cut out all of his features and then added them in place using the template as a guide. I 
I drew on his smile using some black food coloring and my fine tip paintbrush. And then I also added the little neck pieces underneath. Lastly, again, using my template, I cut out this red rim of fondant and then I added that in place using a little bit of shortening so it looks like his hoodie. To make my sugar skulls, I used my template to cut the heads out of some white fondant, again using my X-Acto knife, and then I just cut the holes out using a piping tip, and because they weren't quite big enough for the eye sockets, I used my balling tool just to make them a little bit bigger. I attached those to my bottom tear using a little bit of shortening, and then I drew on the noses using some more of my black food coloring gel and my fine tip paintbrush and I mixed white food coloring gel with pink and purple and green and blue, etc. and then just painted on each design for the sugar skull. I just made it up, you can do whatever you want. I really loved the banners that they used in Coco to tell the story in the beginning. They were so beautiful, so I wanted to add those to my cake. I rolled out all these different colors and cut little squares out of them. The banners in the movie are so intricate and of course they tell the story, but because that was a little hard to recreate, all I did was use different piping tips and just punched out different shapes in each piece. I used my fondant extracting tool to create long ropes of black fondant and then I laid those out on the top of my black tear using a little bit of shortening to hold it in place and then I spaced out each of my little colored squares so it looked like the hanging banner. And finally, once my guitar was dry, I flipped it over and added a skewer on the back and just used another piece of white fondant to hold that in place with a little bit of water and then I stuck that into the top of my cake. And this was the final result guys. I absolutely love how this cake turned out. I think it is so stinking cute. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up if you liked it and to subscribe to my channel for new videos every week. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next one.